Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does, and they've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory, and welcome back to the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today on this Saturday. Today, we're going to go back in time to my college years and talk about Rebecca Gayhart. Now, for you youngins, Rebecca Gayhart is certainly going to be an actress that you don't know. But if you're in your 40s, 50s, maybe in your 60s, you might know who she is. The name might not sound familiar, but the face would be in that in the 90s. This girl, and the funny thing is, I mean, what, what a great name for like an up and coming young actress, Rebecca Gayhart, and that is her birth name, by the way. But she got her break on 90210. Now, for again, for you youngins, the original 90210 was so popular, it was in the zeitgeist, it was gigantic, and that ran all through the 90s. It was, it was like nine, ten seasons. From like 90 to 2000. And of course, I had it spin off the Mel- Melrose place. And I was in college during this time. And again, these were like, uh, kind of like what the HBO Sunday night shows were. Like when Game of Thrones was at its peak and Sopranos. Like these were like must-see TV. And so everyone was watching 90210. Especially in its early seasons. But she was on that show. And that's where she probably caught my eye the first time. And Gay Hart, back then... She had very, very, very curly hair. She, I guess you could say, has a very unique look. She's 5'7", so she's average height, but she has green eyes. And just in, when she was younger in the 90s, um, just just this very, I don't know how to explain, like a joyous face, just, just an ebullient, joyous, fun-filled, gay heart face. And she had this super, super, super curly hair. And she was Almost equally as famous for the Noxima commercials that she used to do. And I think maybe more people know her from those Noxima commercials because she had the fresh face, super curly hair. In terms of her movie role, she got her break in the mid-90s off of 90210. And look, she did tons of television work throughout her own career. But in terms of movies, Nothing to Lose was a comedy that was Mark Lawrence and Tim Robbins. She had a small role in that, but really the the two movies I think that she's probably most famous for are Urban Legend and Jawbreakers, because Jawbreakers, well, let's say Urban Legend. So Urban Legend, look at this cast of hotties, man. I might do I might do one on Alicia Witt. So Alicia Witt's one of those, another one that's like saddled television and did some movies, tall redhead. So she's got the, 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 the top lead for a woman, but Jared Leto. Then you got Rebecca Gayhart, you got Joshua Jackson, Pacey, and then you got Tara Reid. Those are the, the three girls in this movie. And of course, this was the slasher movie that's based on urban legends. And this is, you know, at the time when you had I Know What You Did Last Summer and all those movies that were kind of ripoffs off Scream, which came out in 96. So she did Urban Legend. And then after that, she did Jawbreakers. And Jawbreakers to me is is... A movie that is kind of a ripoff of Heather's, I would say. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of, it's comparable. Because it deals with these beautiful girls, they're a clique, and then things go wrong. They accidentally kill one of their friends on a, on a practical joke. They, these girls are in a clique. And, and Gayhart plays kind of the good girl, uh, the girl with a conscience in this movie. And so it's a black comedy, let's just say. And, and she dies because of a jawbreaker they put in the mouth. And so it's a Heather's ripoff. But that's probably, I think, the the most well-known movie that she was in. And she's second lead behind Rose McGowan. And Rose McGowan, at this point, is coming off of Scream. So Rose McGowan, this is before uh, you know she shaved her hair and as is uh is very vocal right now let's just say and it's definitely changed but back then you know rose mcgowan was certainly a sex symbol at the time i think she was dating marilyn manson at the time and so forth so she did that movie and then uh really after that it's just kind of small work she does a movie called harvard man in 2001 that's got adrian grenier from entourage before he entourage existed and then sarah michelle geller 
She is the fourth woman in that behind Joey Lawrence Adams and Sarah Michelle Gellar. So I should say she's the third one. And then from there, it's a lot of mostly like unknown movies. She does Urban Legends, a sequel to that. And then just look at this list of movies and see if you've heard of any of these. Pipe Dream, 2002. Santa's Slay, 2005. Bunny Whipped, 2007. GBF, 2013. Gray Lady, 2015. Now that's got her husband at the time uh, in that as well. And then she is in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She plays Billy Booth. Now, I don't remember recognizing her in that movie. Definitely next time I watch it, I'll see if I can recognize her. So around that time, again, she starred on television, 9210. And so during that time, I mean, look at these, look at these uh, like TV shows that were one point famous. Sliders, 96. Invasion, 1997. That had Luke Perry in it. Inside Schwartz. Dead Like Me, 2003. The Division. 2004, she was in Nip Tuck, which was a, a good television show by Ryan Murphy. That was his first movie, first TV show, I should say, before he did Glee and all the American Horror Stories and all the things that she hit the politician and all these things he's done since then. She does a three-episode arc. 2006, she does a 13 episodes on a Fox show called Vanished. Then she, again, shows up here and there. CSI Miami, 2007. Ugly Betty, 2007. The Cleaner, 2009. Now, personal life, I think, is interesting. So she met Brett Ratner. Now, if you're not familiar with Brett Ratner, he's probably most famous for doing the movies of uh, the Rush Hour movies, with the ones with Jackie Chan. And uh, that's where he got his his kind of his his superstardom. And then later on, he did an X Men movie that was not good, and some other stuff. So he met her when she was fifteen, fifteen years old. It's like she just arrived in New York, boom. He just meets this girl uh, back in nineteen eighty six. Of course, he's older. They have a romantic relationship, and uh, he stars in some of his shorts. Eventually, they break up. Uh, they were engaged in 97. So again, they were together for like 10 years. Eventually, they break up in 1999. And then in 2001, she runs over and kills a kid, Jorge Cruz Jr., nine-year-old. And at the time, Gayhart paid $10,000 for the kid's funeral expenses and was given permission to go to the funeral service, but she chose not to go. Let's take a break. I wanted to let you know about some of the other feeds here at the Eclectico Gregorio. The oldest one we have is The Awakened Man, which mostly deals with holistic health, medical cover-ups, ways to biohack your life, to ensure longer longevity, medical conspiracies, and naturopathic stuff. We also have, and that there's probably about 400, 500 episodes over there. We started that one back in 20. 17 2016 i believe we also have the female holistic health apothecary which originally started as an essential oils feed and there's about a hundred episodes on essential oils particular essential oils like rose and lavender and sandalwood and so forth and then later i morphed it into more topics that are regarded for female health female specific we've had that feed also since 2016 and then lastly we have confessions of an obese child which deals with my childhood obesity and trauma that came from it. So it's a great feed for those who dealt with childhood trauma that led you to have addictions to alcohol or food. And I interview several people and what it was like to grow up overweight and all the difficulties of losing the weight and then keeping it off and trying to metamorphosize into a regular weighted person. So check out those feeds at the Eclectical Gregory on Apple or Spotify. And then later on, uh, she pleaded no contest to vehicular manslaughter. And she was sentenced to three years of probation, one year of suspension of her license, $2,800 fine, and 750 hours of community service. At that point, the parents then filed a wrongful death lawsuit, which was settled out of court. So she commented once on this accident, and she said... The pain of this tragedy will live with me forever. Despite the allegations in the lawsuit, the facts will establish that this was a most unfortunate accident. 
So who knows what happened a bit after she was, uh, she did the no contest and she was, you know, it's kind of light. She did kill somebody, but three years probation and go, you know, this is an actress. She's a woman. So she kind of gets slapped on the wrist. The family filed a wrongful death lawsuit, as I mentioned, and it was settled out of court. So I don't know if, you know, the fact that it's settled out of court makes me think that she was negligent in some level. And then again, she pleads no contest. So I don't know if the lawyer just told her, look, your best shot is not to fight this. And again, this is still when she's relatively relevant. This is only two, three years after Jawbreaker. So she's still young. She still has a career. Um, she's you know, 30 at the time, more or less. So again, this, she's still in her career. And so I, I don't know exactly what happened there. Later on, she meets McSteamy, Eric Dane from Grey's Anatomy. And they meet in 2004. So the television show's already going on at this point. And she, she's on record. They said it's probably one of the least interesting stories of how we got together. It basically went, you want to go out? Yeah, sure. And then 10 months, they were married. Uh, later so they got married in 2004 and then um, they had two kids one in 2010 and then one in 2011 back to back and in 2009 there was a nude video posted on some website that uh, Dane and Gayhart were having a threesome with with a woman so I guess that was very salacious um, and this was around the time she got pregnant too. So, because that was August 17, 2009, and she gave birth in March 2010. But either way, then eventually she and McSteamy, because McSteamy is just too steamy hot, they filed for divorce. Gay Hart divorced him after 14 years of marriage in 2018, citing irreconcilable differences. Now, I've, I've told you the stat, I've mentioned the stat that women divorce men disproportionately 70% of the time. And then 90% when uh, the woman's college educated. In this case, I do not believe Gay Hart is college educated. I do think she went to uh, Strasburg Theater and Film Institute, but I don't know if she graduated from there. And that's the story of her relationships. There's really not much since uh, 2018. But look, either way, Gay Hart always will be remembered by pretty much anybody who was living in the 90s who was a teenager a little older for the Noxima commercials. And again, just Google her name. You would recognize her. Back in the 90s, she was fresh-faced and beautiful. And she's still beautiful. She's in her low 50s. And she's quite striking still because, I mean, she she has green eyes. just the greenest of green natural eyes and just beautiful hair. And back in the 90s, I mean, she just had these green eyes and that super curly hair that was just very unique and very... Uh, singular. Guys, I'll post something at the Samurai Facebook group and over at Spotify. Of course, you can post comments. You let me know what you think of Rebecca Gayhart. Please rate and review because it helps the algorithm grow this channel. There's a link in the episode notes for PayPal if you want to make a donation because I don't make any money off of this endeavor. And lastly, there's a link to the website which hosts all the Eclectico Gregorio feeds, including has hundreds of articles. But the best way to listen to them is wherever you podcast, which is likely on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, wherever it is. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.